Implosion, the destructive process characterized by the collapsing inwards of an object, stands in stark contrast to the outward expansion of an explosion. In the case of the Titanic submersible, the implosion was triggered by the tremendous hydrostatic pressure of the surrounding water, causing the vessel to collapse within a fraction of a millisecond. In this in-depth blog, we delve into the factors that led to the implosion of the Titanic submersible, examining the materials used in its construction, its specifications, and the engineering behind its operation. The Implosion Phenomenon At the depth where the Titanic rests, the water exerts a pressure of approximately 5,600 pounds per inch too. This immense pressure, nearly 400 times greater than what we experience on the surface, subjected the submersible to an external force as it descended into the ocean's depths. When this force surpassed the structural integrity of the carbon fiber hull, designed to be lighter than traditional materials like steel or titanium, the vessel violently imploded. Titanic Submersible Differentiating Features It's essential to distinguish between a submersible and a submarine to comprehend the unique attributes of the Titanic Submersible. Unlike submarines, which have the ability to dive underwater independently, submersibles are launched from a mother vessel or home vessel. They typically descend via a platform or raft and rely on electric thrusters for propulsion. Specifications and Dimensions The Titanic submersible, known as the Ocean Gate Titan, has a compact size with a length of 22 feet, 6.7 meters, a breadth of 9.2 feet, 2.8 meters, and a height of 8.3 feet, 2.5 meters. Its dimensions can be visualized by comparing it to an average human or a small SUV. Despite its small size, the submersible can accommodate five individuals, a pilot and four passengers. However, the limited space necessitates passengers to sit on the floor during the approximately eight-hour journey. Engineering and Operations The submersible's exterior features four electric thrusters responsible for maneuvering the vessel. Two thrusters are placed horizontally, while the remaining two are located vertically on either side of the vessel. The back section houses the electronics equipment, navigation systems, and oxygen supply, which can even recycle carbon dioxide and replenish the cabin's oxygen levels. This capability allows the submersible to provide a claimed 96-hour oxygen supply. The operational process of the submersible involves several steps. The mothership, named the Polar Prince, anchors at a specific location near the Titanic shipwreck. The submersible, attached to a ramp, gradually descends to a predetermined depth before disengaging from the platform. The pilot utilizes joystick controllers to propel, steer, and control the submersible's movement. The joystick's forward or backward motion propels the vessel accordingly, while tilting the controller left or right enables turning. Additionally, the controller's up or down movement controls the submersible's ascent or descent. Understanding the implosion incident. Despite its advanced engineering, the Titanic submersible suffered an implosion due to the experimental use of carbon fiber in its construction. The debris, located just 1,600 feet from the Titanic wreckage, revealed the submersible's weak carbon fiber hull as a contributing factor to its failure. Conclusion The implosion of the Titanic submersible serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the critical importance of understanding materials and their limitations in deep-sea applications. Through a detailed examination of the submersible's specifications, engineering, and operational aspects, we gain insights into the challenges faced by such vessels in extreme environments. As we continue to explore the depths of our planet's oceans and venture into space, it is imperative that advancements in material science, engineering, and safety protocols align to ensure the success and integrity of future submersibles and space exploration vehicles. The lessons learned from the Titanic submersible implosion will undoubtedly contribute to the development of more robust and resilient vessels, safeguarding the adventurers who venture into the uncharted territories of our world and beyond.